Hey, brother. Sorry, car outside. Wonder if you want to shoot some hoops before you get your day started. My day's already started. Looked pretty intense. Tough case? Toughest case of my life. I'm about to crack it wide open. How so? Well, I sent the FBI an email to get a background check on this guy. Well, who is he? He claims to be Grace's first husband. What? Grace has a first husband? No way. That's right. Absolutely no way. I need uh, 200 rolls of the gift wrap and three gross of the shopping bags. Yeah, I've bought from you before. The store's uh, Grace's treasures. You're speaking to Grace. Um, Bennett. Um, yeah, my last name is Bennett. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. What do you want? I was just wondering where the laundry facilities are here in the bed and breakfast. There's a washer and dryer in the mudroom. Thank you. Grace, you seem to be pretty upset on the phone just now, as if you weren't sure what your last name was. I don't know what you mean. I think you do. And it's all my fault, and I am so sorry I've turned your world upside down. And it's all been a huge mistake. Ah, uh, there's the boat. Want to take a look? No, thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm still not sure we did the right thing, Basil. We're working for Julian Crane, who paid us a pile of money. It was the right thing, believe me. I thought so too, but now that I've met Sheridan Crane, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about having planted that bomb. Oh, come on, June. It's too late for that now. I can't help the way I feel. Sheridan Crane is too young. She's too happy to die. At least she'll have company. When that boat blows, her boyfriend Luis will go with her. This is so beautiful. <laughs> you happy? Yes, I've never been happier in my life. With the man I love, far away from everything and everyone. Never ends. Good, because I hope it lasts forever too. Mwah. I can stay beside you like this for the rest of my life. Mm. Hey, I'm gonna try the hotel again, see if I can get a hold of Teresa. I'm sure they'll put you through that this morning. So, this is Bermuda. Yo, this is sweet. Man, this is just the airport. <laughs> Yo, Whitney, I know it's not your style to be spontaneous like this, but ain't you glad you did? Well, I'm glad I'm here to make sure that Teresa's okay. Yeah, yeah, me too. Her coming down here to talk to Julian Crane was not a good idea. It was a terrible idea. I mean, everybody knows what kind of lech Mr. Crane is. Mm -hmm. But she was so determined to try to convince him to take Ethan back into the family. Well, hey, who knows? I mean, maybe she pulled it off. You know, maybe she already convinced Julian to take Ethan back. Well, if she has, then that means we came down here for nothing. Oh, maybe not. I have heard that Bermuda happens to be one of the most romantic places in the world. Are you sure you're ringing the right room? Yes, sir, but there's no answer in Ms. Lopez Fitzgerald's room. Well, try again, please. I mean, it's early. She should be there. Well, this can't be true. I mean, we, we can't to be married. <laughs> well, of course we're not married. Well, then why are we wearing wedding rings, Mr. Crane? Well, I, I, I have no idea, but I do know that we are not married. I'd never buy cheap gold bands like this. It's out of the question. It's a kind of joke. Well, I, I, I don't remember last night. I mean, I know that I came down here to to try to convince you to take Ethan back and your family, and we were in the dining room. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that. And you kept pouring champagne, and then you said that we should come up here to discuss it privately. Yes, I remember that, too. And and we kept, you know, drinking more champagne, and then, and then I got tired. I, I, I fell asleep, and I had this dream that I married Ethan. And then I woke up. Well, then I, I realized that Ethan wasn't here. 
I should hope not. Well, then, then I woke up with you. Naked. Is it possible? Can we be married? So let, let me get this straight. This guy comes back claiming to be Grace's first husband. You administer a psychological test, and he passes. Right. Then you give him a polygraph test, and he passes that. That's right. Then you get a copy of a legal marriage certificate saying that he and Grace were married in Hartford, right? Right again. And he knows about Grace's sister, Faith, that she likes honey in her tea, and that, that her and her sister both have psychic premonitions. It all sounds pretty convincing when you lay it out like that. I'd hate to admit it, but yeah, it does. Sounds like this guy could be for real. Yeah. I agree, it does. So what makes you so sure that he's lying? I mean, maybe he was married to Grace before she met you. Maybe it was the amnesia that knocked it out of her mind. Grace was never married to David Hastings. All right, he's nothing but a con artist. Well, what's the con he's trying to pull? What does he want? I haven't figured that out yet. When I get his background check from FBI, I might have an idea. Check this out. FBI profile? Yeah. I did some research using David's M.O., and he fits the FBI profile of a con man perfectly. Hmm. Usually a drifter with an unstable background. Yeah, usually they pick their victims through magazine articles or newspaper stories. David admitted that he read about Grace in a national magazine that covered our house being destroyed. Hmm. But was, was all that personal information about Grace in the article? Yeah. But you can get that kind of information on the internet if you know how to search for it. So, what's his excuse for not showing up till now after all these years? Well, he says he was traveling out of the country, supposedly as a photographer on, on assignments. And he didn't know where Grace was until he saw that magazine article. And then he conveniently lost all his papers and records that would tie him to Grace in a boating accident. Poor Grace. How's she handling all this? What's her reaction to this David Hastings guy? Are you saying that you were lying to me? And that you were never married to me? No. Oh, but you just said that you're... No, Grace, everything I ever said was the truth. You're my wife. We were married in Hartford over 20 years ago. One day you just disappeared, and I've been searching for you ever since. But this isn't making any sense. You just said that you were sorry, and that this was all a terrible mistake. That... Grace, what I meant was how it all happened. How I just stormed into your life and... and just tried to reclaim you. And ever since I read that magazine article, I never stopped to think if you were married to someone else. I suddenly didn't know you had amnesia and that you wouldn't remember me. I just wanted to hold you in my arms. I love you too much to ever hurt you, Grace. I should have... I should have thought of a better way to approach you. There isn't any way you could have approached me that wouldn't have shaken me to the core. I mean, I, I, I can hardly breathe when I think that in the eyes of God, I could be married to somebody other than Sam. I can see that you are pretty shaken up by this. Do you have any idea what this is doing to Sam? Or me, or, or my children, if they should find out? I would imagine it would come as quite a shock. Please don't do this. 
you, you seem like a decent man. If this is about some scam for you to get money from us, I will give you everything I have. I mean, it's not much because we're not rich, but please, if you have any decency at all, just tell me the truth. Am I your wife? It's not as if we're putting Sheridan out of her misery. She's so totally happy. She seems to have so much to live for. Will you cut it out? If I'd have known you were going all sappy on me, I'd have to use someone else for the job. I wish you had. I'm sorry I got all mixed up in this. Well, it's too late now. In just a little while, Luis and Sheridan will be heading out to do some deep sea fishing. When that bomb blows, it'll be the end of them. Taking over for a minute, I'm gonna get our fishing gear ready. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye. <laughs> well, any luck? I'm sorry, sir. There's still no answer in Ms. Lopez Fitzgerald's room. I, I can't understand. Where could she be? We do have a Luis Lopez Fitzgerald staying with us. That's her brother. I didn't know they were staying in the same hotel. Luis and Sheridan are here in Bermuda, too. Maybe Teresa's with them. You know, if Luis is keeping an eye on Teresa, then there's no way Julian would try to put a move on her. Well, Luis would kill him. Would you ring Luis Lopez Fitzgerald's room, please? I'm sorry, sir. He and Ms. Crane left very early this morning for a fishing trip. Wait, um, c can I speak to Julian Crane? Yes, sir. No, 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 don't answer it. We have to figure this out before we talk to anyone. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Crane's room is not answering either. Oh, um... All right, thanks. Uh, I'll be at the hotel soon anyways. Um, if you would, um, if Miss Lopez Fitzgerald comes in, will you tell her Ethan called? Of course. Thanks. Well, Teresa's not answering the phone in her room, so uh, let's just go to the hotel. You know, she's probably at the beach. Or maybe she's having breakfast. Yeah, I'm sure we'll find her. I can't wait to see her. Mm. Whoever it was hung up. Now, to figure this out. You figure it out. I need a bloody... As I said, I had too much champagne. And I got tired, so I laid down. I had this dream. I want to make this night so special for you. I want it to be everything you ever dreamed of. Oh, but you already have. I mean, everything is perfect. Just being with you, that's all I need. And then having you hold me. Knowing that nothing can ever separate us. Knowing that you're my husband, now and forever. And then I woke up. And I realized that Ethan wasn't here. Instead, you were. You were beside me in, in the bed. Naked. I mean, well, why were you in bed with me? And what did you do to me? Wait a minute. If you think you can pin some sort of rape charge on me, you're sorely mistaken. Rape? I, oh, my, oh, my God. I promise you, Teresa, I, oh my God. I did not rape you. I assure you, I would never have gotten to bed with you if you hadn't asked me. Oh, my God. Oh, mm. good God. <laughs> Can life be this sweet? You're so exciting, I don't even need props to get me in the mood. Oh, God, I love it. You're insatiable. <laughs> so am I, my luscious one. Mm. Mm. Uh, you wanted me, Teresa, as much as I wanted you. No. No, I, I would never invite you into my bed. No, no, I, I would never make love to you. Unless, anyway, it, it was our wedding night. Oh, good. 
The FBI sent my request. They're going to be sending over the background check later on today. Yeah. I'm going to go check on Grace. Well, I'm coming with you. But, you know, you ask the same question I've been asking myself over and over. Why did this guy come now? When Grace and I have just got back together again. I mean, why now? I have to know the truth. Well, we married years ago. Am I your wife? Grace, I'd do anything to take away your pain. But I swear to you by all that's holy, you are my wife. We were married in the eyes of God. Oh, God. How am I supposed to deal with this? I, I, I feel like the earth is moving under my feet like I'm in an earthquake or... Can the life that Sam and I created together just be swept away like the first 20 years of my life? No, I, I am not gonna let that happen because I love Sam, and my life is here in, the, in this bed and breakfast in this town with, with my family and my friends. I have lost it all before. I am not going to lose everything again. Grace, what is it? What's wrong? Grace? the most terrible feeling that it's all over for all of us okay mr. crane okay let's try to remember you have to remember what happened last night because I would never in a million years make love to you unless we were married <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's, it's impossible why would I I marry you all I, I want to do uh, anyway I I remember being in the dining room. Right. We came up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we both had too much champagne to drink. Right. You got sleepy. Mm -hmm. You lay down. I got very sleepy. Got into bed next to you. Uh, we both had dreams. Yes, I dreamed that I married Ethan. And I dreamed I was making love to you. And we both, we woke up. Mm. And I was here, not Ethan, right? so ipso facto, you and I must have made love together. Oh, no, 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 Oh, no, no. yes, dear. <laughs> but, and it's a very big but, we did not get married. I mean, how could we in the middle of the night? Well, I hope you're right, because it's horrible enough that I might have made love to you. I mean, I would never forgive myself if I ever betrayed Ethan. No, but you would be even worse if you and I actually were married. Well, I can think of worse fates, dear. Okay, Mr. Crane. Ethan is the only man that I've ever wanted or dreamed of. Well, he's the only man that I will ever want to marry. Well, then you don't have to worry about it because you and I are not married. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't tell anyone that we spent the night together. Oh. I mean, if Luis found out, well, he would just kill you. Oh. I mean, I was so scared when he was here. I was sticking his nose in where it didn't belong, thinking I was taking advantage of some young girl. <laughs> well, he can never know that it, that it was me, Mr. Crane. Well, I have no reason to ever tell him. My lips are sealed. Mm. Okay. Well, then, I am going to my room. I'm going to take a shower. And then I'm going to get the first flight back to Harmony. It's a very good idea, my dear. Oh, my God. What is it? It's the brochure. I mean, for the 24-hour wedding chapel here at the resort here. What? What's it doing in my purse? <laughs> that doesn't mean that we actually went there. It doesn't? Mr. Crane. Oh, maybe we did. I mean, that could be. Well, how we got married in the middle of the night. Grace. Grace, come back. Grace, Grace, are you all right? 
Sometimes I have these premonitions. I know you used to have them years ago. So did your sister Faith. What did you just see then? I sense that your coming back here will tear my family apart. I mean, that it's already started to happen. Grace, I am your family. You're my wife. I couldn't stand to lose you again. If I thought it would make you happy, I'd walk straight out that door. But you were happy with me. Happier than you can imagine. We belong together. What the hell are you doing here, huh? We were just talking. He, he, he's staying here, Sam. Well, not anymore, he's not. Now, I want you to get your things and get the hell out of here right now. No, Sam. He's staying. Hey. Hey, I thought you were getting the fishing gear. Oh, we can fish later. Okay. Sweetheart, you're getting burned. Get some protection. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thanks. Oh, I love it out here. Don't you? It is perfect. Oh. Mm. We should buy a boat. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hey, I always wanted to get a second-hand boat. Yeah? We could teach the kids to sail, sail up and down the Harmony Coast. We're going to have a wonderful life together. Check the dining room, see if she's having breakfast. All right. Check this place out. Oh, this is so gorgeous. And look, you can see the ocean right outside the window over there. Yo, that's amazing. You know, my parents are going to kill me for coming down here without telling them. But I really am glad I did. She's not in the dining room. Wow, this place brings back memories. When Teresa and I came down here to make arrangements for my honeymoon with Gwen. You know, I wonder if that's when I realized that I love Teresa more than Gwen. Hey man, it must be hard not to be able to fall in love in a place like this. I know, it is so beautiful down here. Yeah, it it's is. Beautiful. You know, and, and now we've come full circle. I'm gonna find Teresa and tell her that I forgive her for scanning my mother's letter into the computer, and then nothing can stand in our way to get married. <laughs> She's gonna be so happy. <laughs> Check this out. There's a 24-hour chapel here in the islands. We can get married right here. Wait, here in Bermuda? I don't know. Whitney, why not? Look, her maid of honor's here, my best man is here. Sheridan and Luis are here. I mean, we could have the double wedding just as planned. It's perfect. You know, that's not a bad idea. It could be really romantic. Whitney, I am telling you, I can't wait another day. I'm gonna go check the front desk and see if Teresa's back in her room by now. She's gonna be so surprised when she sees me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing this brochure. I mean, that must be why I dreamed about marrying Ethan in the 24-hour chapel. Let us begin. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to join this couple in holy matrimony. What if it wasn't a dream? What if I did get married? Only it was you, not Ethan. I mean, one of us would have remembered it, wouldn't we? But I don't remember making love to you either. I mean, I remember making love to Ethan because I dreamed that Ethan and I got married. Oh, my God, I hope that is not your brother again. Julian, you in there? It's Bruce. Oh, thank the Lord. It's an old friend of mine who's also down here for a divorce. Oh. Good 
morning, good morning. A little present for the bride and groom. Let him stay, Sam. Look, I don't want him hanging around here, upsetting you more. Sam, Sam, he's not going to try anything with both of us here. I'm not going to try anything, period. As I said, we were just talking. Look, I want you out of here now. Look, Sam, I know you are trying to protect me, but his leaving is not going to solve anything. I mean, we can't just ignore him or pretend that he doesn't exist. Look, Hank, did, did Sam tell you what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, he told me. I'm Hank Bennett, Sam's brother. David Hastings. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, but I do have a wife. I'm sorry, sir, but Miss Lopez Fitzgerald is still not answering. Still? Where could she be? Perhaps she's at breakfast. I checked in the dining room. She's not there. You know, maybe she went out for an early swim. I know I would. Yeah, I, I guess we can check the beach. Wait, but before we go outside, we, I have to check Julian's room. You might know where she is. Look, Ethan, do you really think it's a good idea to be going up to Julian's room? I know what you're thinking. You think we're going to walk in on Julian trying to get to rescind a bed? Wake up, Teresa. <laughs> Boy, you two must have had some night. Apparently. Are you, are you all right? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shock the bride. Mm. Oh, Teresa, what, what the hell do you keep talking about? What, what, what bride? What bride? What, what bride? Your bride. Oh, you don't remember? Remember what? I was at the bar. Mac and Graham had gone to bed, and I got a call from the two of you saying you wanted to get married right away and you wanted me to be there. Now, you both sounded so happy. I, I mean, I asked you if you were sure about it. God. Well, it seemed pretty sudden to me, but Teresa said she loved you, and you said Teresa swept you off your feet. <laughs> you also said your divorce had come through and you wanted to marry the woman you loved. So we went to the 24-hour wedding chapel, and we actually had a very nice ceremony. It's quite touching to hear you taking your vows. Till death do you part. <laughs> I married Teresa. I married Mr. Crane. Yep, and I was your witness. You see, the judge gave me the marriage license for safekeeping since you two were so blotto. There it is, black and white. Mr. and Mrs. Julian Crane. Um. Grace is not your wife. You're a liar, and you're a con. Now, I'm waiting for the FBI background check to come through. And when it does, I have no doubt that it'll show Grace exactly what you are. It's not going to tell you anything that I haven't already told you, Sam. Then why do you fit the FBI profile of a con so perfectly? Sam, you already checked to see if you had an arrest record. The FBI background check is a lot more thorough. I know how you feel, Sam. I would feel the same in your position. Look, is the FBI check going to explain how he knew so much about me, about the scar on my foot? Whoa. What scar? David says that I stepped on a seashell and cut my foot. Sam didn't even know about the scar. What about it, Sam? Doesn't mean a damn thing. Maybe David conned Faith before she died. Maybe she told him all this stuff. The FBI background check is going to tell us a lot more, believe me. And if you were smart, you'd leave before it comes in. The FBI background check is going to prove everything I've said is true. I'm going to get some breakfast. Grace, would you like some tea or juice or something? No. Okay. What kind of juice does Grace drink every morning? Is this another test? What kind of juice is Grace's favorite? I 
know Julian's reputation with women, but I'm not worried. And he just wouldn't try to take my fiance to bed. I hope the hell he didn't. Yeah, so do I, because I'd tear him apart if he did. All right, all right, let's look. If Louise and Sheridan are here, then Louise would make sure that Teresa was protected, right? Exactly. So I'm going to find out what room Julian is in. That desk clerk is not going to tell you Julian's room number. Well, then I'll just talk to the manager. Look, I'll tell him it's urgent, and I'll remind him of that very large tip I left him when I was down here last year. Hey, maybe this time Teresa won't be her own worst enemy. Yeah, I hope so. Because this could be the day her dream comes true. She could finally marry Ethan. Uh, listen, Bruce, I would really appreciate it if you didn't um, say anything to anyone about this wedding. <laughs> sure, no problem. Hey, I gotta hand it to you, you dog, you. <laughs> Teresa's a knockout. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. better this is the worst day of my life you know I came down here to do something good for Ethan and instead I destroyed his life and mine oh, please don't be so melodramatic <laughs> you know it's true Ethan will go crazy when he finds out what we've done in Louise whilst he'll kill you I mean this is just a disaster Oh, it's not all that tragic. It is tragic. I mean, marriage should be forever. I love Ethan, and I want to be married to him, not you. Dear, just I had a terrible shock. Uh, you just need to lie back, regroup. <sighs> yes. Just have to make the best of this. <laughs> the best of it? I mean, that's... that's impossible. Well, now, I once had a nanny who used to say behind every cloud is a silver lining, which means that sometimes good can come from bad. There's no good about us being married, Mr. Crane. Oh. Don't be rash, my dear. And please, call me Julie. You know, it is a honeymoon after all. Let me show you how a husband treats his wife. You don't know what kind of juice Grace likes, do you? I know what she used to like. Pink grapefruit mixed with cranberry juice. Is that true, Grace? Yeah. Excuse me. I hate to admit it, Sam, but David's passed every test with flying colors. It doesn't mean anything. The only thing that means anything is that damn FBI report. I left word at the station to send me the report here. It says, uh, David Hastings' work as a, as a photojournalist for over 20 years for several magazines. He's won prestigious awards and, uh, he's never been arrested. Then it's true. He's my husband. Let me see. I don't want to stay and watch. Sorry, no. Junie, but you're staying. This is the moment we've been waiting for. As soon as they get out past the reef, the timer will detonate the bomb, and then no one will be able to rescue them.
You know, the Decimer said there was some good fish on the other side of the reef. I might even see some dolphins. Oh, I'd love to see some dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> I am not your wife. Why? I beg to differ with you. This little piece of paper says you are. You're my adorable little wife. And I must say, a man couldn't have a more delectable young bride. I am not your wife. I will die if Ethan finds out about this. He can never know that we spent last night together. Do you understand? Yes. It will be our little secret for Teresa. What we had together was beautiful. But Ethan need never know. Mm. I hope Julian knows where Teresa is. Hey, Ethan, you know what? Why don't we uh, all just go back down to the lobby and call him first, you know? Because we don't want to surprise the guy. You know what? I think Chad has a great idea. Well, yeah. What are you two afraid of? Well, Julian didn't answer the phone when we called earlier, right? Yeah, I mean, he might have a guest in there, you know? Or he might just be asleep and he didn't hear me. Look, I, I'm worried about Teresa, all right? Uh, he might know where she is. Julian, it's Ethan. Are you there? Come on, open up. Oh my god, Ethan's here. He's gonna find out we're married. Julian, it's me. Are you in there? 